Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Michael and All Angels, especially our contemporary community here. So good to be with you this morning. And want to invite you to stand to your feet as we begin our worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let's sing this together. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your bread come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let us shine. hearts are open, but to you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, let's sing together, we welcome you with praise. So I'm exalted, Lord. 
Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael and All Angels. We're glad you're here. We're starting out on this week where we're going to celebrate Christmas. I'm aware it's a week when the light shines brightly as we celebrate Christmas, but it's also a week when it shines brightly in what can be darker for some people. So as we start today, I just want to pray for all of us as we head into Christmas this week. Gracious Lord, we um, lift up this time first asking you to help us worship you today in beauty and truth and to set aside anything that's holding us back from being completely here and fully present to honor you and to receive from you. And as we start this week in which we're going to celebrate Christmas, we pray for those who are hurting this week, those who are anxious about the things to get done, for all the different craziness, for all the you know, th- practical things, like even the doctors that are trying to get all their stuff done before the end of the year because people are trying to finish up their insurance before the end of the year, all that kind of stuff, the sh- shopping, the gifts. Help us to keep all that in the right place and perspective. And um, for those who are hurting because of changed relationships, all of that. And Lord, help us to be in a place where we can see your light, celebrate your light, receive your light, and give you honor and glory. We pray that you would help us to do that even now as we gather this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's say this prayer together as we prepare our hearts. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary, too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. you at my heart and I will search for yours Jesus take my life and lead me on Lord you at my heart 
And I will search for yours Let me be to you a sacrifice Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to week three, the final week of our sermon series on the first Christmas carols. Um, If you've been here with us through this four-week season of Advent, you know that we have been very much in the book of Isaiah and in the first chapter of Luke. And if you haven't been with us, let me just commend to you one more time that if you have some time in the next few days, I promise God's blessing upon you if you read through the book of Isaiah and the first chapter of Luke. We've looked at um, uh, the Hail Mary, that song, the Ave Maria, We've looked at the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah, the father of John, the baptizer. And today we're going to look at the Magnificat, Mary's song, and how all three of those kind of relate together. These are three of four or five, depending on how you count, early, early songs, Christmas carols, if you will, of the Christian church. Another one that you might know of if you practice morning and evening prayer is the song of Simeon. We call it the Nuc Dimittis. Um, who at Jesus' presentation when he's eight years old and they come to the temple, um, he meets him and knows now that his life is complete and offers praise to God. Well, we're going to look at this uh, Song of Mary in just a minute. But before we do that, I just want to make a couple of notes. One is that um, as we've gone through this series and we've thought about our early Christmas carols, songs that come to mind, I know that maybe for if you're like me, When I hear Benedictus, like, I don't always have a song immediately come to mind. Justin does, because he plays them all the time. But I have a lot of songs that go through my head when I read scripture. And that's a really good thing. And I've talked to to you all about many of those over the last year or two. 
I hope that the more you engage in God's holy word, and the more you engage in beautiful praise and worship songs, ancient hymns and modern, the more and more that in your heart and mind, those things will be brought together so that when you read a beautiful passage of scripture, that God will inspire you to sing. And that when you hear a beautiful praise and worship song, you will remember God's holy words to you in scripture. Those things for me go together very well. And I hope that they will for you as also. Of course, in a couple of days, as we celebrate the nativity, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're going to sing all those familiar hymns and carols. And all of us love Christmas. In fact, um, it's been a real joy in my house. My two children are learning how to play the piano. And so the last three years, they've been learning different Christmas songs every year. And this year, they even played a duet together, which was a real treat. Um, so even yesterday at our house, when we had some family over, the kids were anxious to get on the piano and pluck away. And what a joy it is to sing those songs. When we think of Magnificat, the song of Mary, Again, we've got another one of those Latin words. We, <laughs> we deal with all these special phrase, phraseology and Latin words in the church. And just remember, it's, it's okay to call it the Song of Mary if the Latin is confusing to you. Um, Mary is confusing to many of us. What are we supposed to do with Mary? Those of you who come from a Roman Catholic background might have a particular perspective on Mary or really struggle with Roman Catholic perspective on Mary. And those of you who come from a more Protestant evangelical background might want nothing to do with Mary at all because of what those Roman Catholics do, and that's scary. <laughs> As Anglicans, we have always embraced Mary as uh, the Theotokos, the mother of our Lord, the mother of God, and we have seen her in the great litany of all the saints that have come before us, those who have borne witness on how we are to live faithful lives in love and service to God. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So Mary's song, the Magnificat, um, again, is in Luke chapter 1, and it happens in the context of the visitation. When Mary finds out that she's pregnant, she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant in her old age, with John the baptizer in, in her womb. John the baptizer leaps in her womb. The Holy Spirit is filling with all the people that are around. And Mary begins to proclaim God and says these words, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. This is an excellent way for each of us to begin our prayers. We acknowledge that God is God, and we're not. And we acknowledge that we're blessed, that we receive God's blessing. And we affirm who God is, Savior, Lord, God, right? That's something we can take away and we can add to our prayers. When we pray, we should do those same things. And then Mary begins a litany of thanksgivings. Yes, all generations will call me blessed because this is happening to me, but what God is doing through me is fulfilling all those promises that God made long ago to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, that God made through the prophets, through Isaiah. Did y'all notice that Emmanuel and Isaiah eats honey? And John the baptizer eats honey? There's something special about honey. I think we're supposed to eat it. I don't know. Um, or feed it to your kids if you want them to grow up and be great. One of those things is happening. I don't know. Anyway, so Mary is proclaiming all the things that God is fulfilling in the Messiah who is going to be born through her. Now, my brothers and sisters, we live in America, and this song is dangerous for us. Because what God is doing in the Messiah is that he is casting the rich aside and he is lifting up the lowly. He is sending away those who are well fed and feeding those who are hungry. And we happen to fall in that category of those who are rich and those who are well fed. This is good news for those who are lowly, those who are humble and meek in our world. This is good news for those who are poor, but it may not sound like good news to us may sound like God may be casting us aside. We should, for a moment, take pause and think about that and think about all the blessings that we enjoy and think about if we are sharing our abundance with those who have need or if we will be sent away like those who are rich and don't share. I, I hope that you'll spend a little bit of time thinking about that because 
This good news is intended to be for those who are struggling in life. And obviously, we all struggle in different ways, but particularly for those who are struggling financially, those who are struggling to find warm homes and good food to eat. I think Mary's song reminds us of our own responsibility to work with God and to help provide those things here on earth as God would have them to be. Again, this song comes in the context of Mary's visitation. And what we think about Mary as Episcopalians is important, um, but you have to remember that what people think about Mary all over the world is something even greater. Um, I was thinking this week about um, all of the visitations of Mary that have happened to so many people and communities over the generations. So you may know of some people who celebrate uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe or many of the other uh, appearances, visitations of Mary to those in need. This happens uh, quite frequently in um, Spanish-speaking countries, but it's not unique to them. It happens all over the world. It happens in America. There, there is an appearing of Mary at a time of need, usually to women, um, who found themselves in, in a desperate situation like her cousin Elizabeth was in her old age being pregnant. And I think for us, what is important to remember is when Mary shows up to Elizabeth in that visitation, Elizabeth recognizes that Mary has said yes to God and she is blessed. And that helps Elizabeth understand her own yes to God and that her son, John the baptizer, will grow up and pave the way for Jesus. And I think every time that Mary appears, every time that Mary comes and visits somebody in life, I think it's a reminder for them, and I hope for us, that Mary said yes. Fundamentally, we would not be here as saved as Christians if Mary had said no. Jesus is born through her because of her faithfulness to God. And so when Mary appears to people in their lives, they need that affirmation of her saying yes so that they too have permission and the strength and courage to say yes for whatever God is asking on them. So my brothers and sisters, this week, the next couple of days before Christmas, I want you to think and pray really, really hard about what it is God is asking you to do. Is God asking you to go and feed those who are hungry? to go and figure out a way to provide safe homes, housing for those who are without. Is God asking you to call somebody that you're estranged from, that you might work towards reconciliation, just as God was reconciling all of humanity and the world to himself through Jesus Christ? What is God asking you to do? And then I would ask that you remember Mary's song, that you would remember Mary's faithfulness, and that you would remember that Mary said yes, and because she did, all of this is possible today. So we give thanks for our sister Mary, for Saint Mary, for her yes, and we hope and pray that all of us would say the same when God asks on us. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks for your servant Mary, for her faithfulness to you, for her response and the affirmative of your call on her life to be the mother of our Lord. And we pray, Lord, that wherever Mary appears, whoever she visits, you would give them strength and courage to say yes as well. We pray, Lord, that wherever you're calling each and every one of us this Advent season as we prepare for the birth of your son, uh, you would remind us of Mary's faithfulness and give us strength to say yes also. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I invite you to stand as we join with Christians through the ages in affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for all those who are traveling this week for their safety. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let me invite you to take a seat. I want to again welcome you. Glad that you're here. Um, if you are a guest with us, I want to invite you to take a moment to find a communication card in your service leaflet that was handed out and just give us some information so we can let you know all the incredible great things taking place here at this church. Um, also, if you'd like the clergy to pray for you, please write your prayer request on the back of the same card and put it, either way, put it in the plate when it comes by in just a few minutes. Um, I want to mention... Obviously, Tuesday is Christmas Eve. I want to tell you about the schedule. Um, there's lots of great things happening. If you've got little ones and you want to do the children's service, that's going to be at 11, the joy service in the big church. At 1 o'clock, we're going to do something we've never done before. Um, really cool service. Uh, and I'm going to ask Justin to talk about it if he's not too busy with Eric yeah. over there. <laughs> you want to discuss 3 and 5 in here? In this I room? haven't yet. You can do the whole thing. Okay, One, three, five. sounds good. Well, 3 and 5 o'clock, we'll be right here in this room celebrating Christmas together. And I just want to give a quick shout out. Our director of parish life, uh, Tish, is in here with us. And I'd just like yeah. to thank her and her team, the Altar Guild, the Flower Guild, for making this room look fantastic. So yeah. 
Thank you very much. So 3 and 5 o'clock will be right here. If that time does not work out for you and your family, we'd like to invite you to our 1 o'clock jazz Christmas service. One of my favorite records, Christmas records in the whole wide world is the soundtrack to the Charlie Brown Christmas special with the Vince Giraldi trio. And so our very own Bach Norwood is putting together a wonderful jazz band. And so we'll be there doing your favorite carols. Um, and the feeling that we have discussed going after is sitting with your family around a fire, drinking a hot cup of cocoa. That's the feeling we're going after and so we invite you to join us at one o'clock if that works for your schedule and it's going to be a great time thank you J thanks justin and that's going to be upstairs yes the one o'clock will be in the church our three and five will be right down here yeah so make plans to join us we're looking forward to that i want to mention also that the week after go ahead and give you the announcement so a week from today the 29th uh we'll put signs up if in case you forget but the service will be also upstairs we're going to combine the 11 o'clock upstairs and the 11 o'clock here in one service, kind of like we did in July. It'll be contemporary, we're leading it, but it'll be upstairs. So just so you know what's happening next Sunday. I wanna mention that starting January 5th, we've got a new sermon series starting, which uh, I think you'll enjoy. It's gonna be a sermon series that is on Christianity and world religions. So we're gonna be uh, stepping back and looking at all the major world religions in the world and kind of doing a little bit of compare and contrast with Christianity. It's a great sermon series to invite somebody to. So. As the holidays go through, it's a good, it's a really perfect time to say, hey, come check out my church and check this thing out. And we'll be starting that on January the 5th. And so I want to mention that's coming up. Um, we're coming now to a time of Holy Communion. If you're a guest and you're wondering how it all works, all the instructions you need are going to be on the screens at the end of the communion prayers, and you'll see what needs to happen. Um, two final announcements. If you'd like someone to pray with you today, as I mentioned at the start, I know the holidays are hard. Um, so maybe that's what you need prayer for, or maybe it's something you're giving thanks for. You stopped to think about what you're giving thanks for. Trained prayer ministers will be available over here on that side from the time of communion on. And you can go back there and just tell them what you want prayer about. They'll do the rest. It's a great thing. Um, finally, in just a few moments, we're going to invite any of our uh, little ones, our children, um, who want to come forward to have a front row view around the altar so after we prepare the altar and we've done the offering, we'll invite the kids up. But I want to plant that seed now so you can be mustering up the courage to come forward, little ones. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Congregation is invited to be seated as we continue in prayer. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people and the words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper... He took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to sing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses As we forgive those who trespass against us Lead us not into temptation But deliver us from me Amen. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Okay, lift it up. Lift it up. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercy we are not so much as to gather up the crumbs under that table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. Keep silence and with fear. 
fear and trembling stand Ponder nothing earthly Sing in his hand Christ our God to earth descended Our full homage to Kings yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, in the body Standing as you're able, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. At his feet, let's sing. At his feet, the six wings seraph, cherubim with sleepless eyes, bear their faces to the presence, as with sleepless voice they Five on Christmas Eve. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We'll see you then.